And I'm sorry. I hope you uh, did hear what I was uh, what I was saying. <laughs> Otherwise, eh. Um, I said nothing special. Uh, I see uh, we've got a full house already. Uh, Custard Tire, Heli, Invisible, Dark Chasey, Control Math, uh, Delete was here as well. Welcome in. Uh, how are you all doing? Uh, I hope you had a great day today uh, or had a great week already. As you can see, I'm already a bit uh, better than last week. Last week I was kind of ill. Uh, that's why we just played Dead Space to gather some footage. Um, but I am at full strength. I look better. Thanks. Um, got a kitty on my lap. Life is good indeed. Um, if it weren't for all the very valuable stuff that I have here, I would let the kitties in here as well and I would have them less white. Okay. But, um, that's weird because, well, it's not weird, but that's good because today I actually went to a blood drive on my work. So uh, at work, I work in a hospital, we actually had like a, um, a deal worked out with uh, the Red Cross and they came to the hospital to actually do a blood drive um, for all the employees there. So today I gave like, what is it, half a pint or a pint of blood and um, yeah, it was quite fun. I, I, I like doing that. So um, I, I'd say anyone who's ever thought about donating blood or maybe hasn't even ever thought about it, just Go do that. Look up your local Red Cross donation center, go to a blood drive, just do it. You'll help a lot of people with it. So, uh, yeah, uh, colors complement your complexion. Yes, I look as yellow as my shirt. You can hold the bottle of brain matter beige next to your face and it's the same. Ah, no, the moment I look like brain matter beige, I'm probably dead. But because we mentioned it, like... It's, it's really pale. <laughs> uh, I will donate again and puke. Yes, probably. Is it that bad? Yeah, yeah. Brain matter beige is, is really pale, so... <laughs> Doesn't matter. I don't even know. I'm probably gonna use brain matter beige on Dagon today. Well, maybe not today, maybe next week. Um... So, yeah, uh, do I have a couple of announcements? I'm thinking, do I have announcements? No, I don't have announcements, great. Um, then I'd say let's uh, take a look at what we're painting today, because you're all here for that, mostly. And maybe for my rugged look, good looks. Rugged look. And my uh, unfailable English and pronunciation. Shh. Okay, so. I will uh, talk like this. Is that better? It could just be that. You know? Does this do something? Is it doing anything? I don't know. Is it doing anything? I'm turning a knob that says volume, so... Normally I, I, I suggest that it ups the volume of whatever it catches. Or turn the music down. Yeah, but the music is already rather down. What's wrong with my knob? I don't know. Could be nothing wrong with my knob. Um. <laughs> is it better now? Apparently in my settings it was at like 90%. Now it's at 100%. Maybe that did something. I don't know. Now it's good. Okay. I don't know. Are you listening with your headphones or not? Maybe that's that's a difference. Anyway, if there's anything else that I have to change for you guys, just let me know. I'll gladly do it. Is it in the red crystal? Uh, my um, microphone? Yes, it is. My microphone is completely in the red at the moment. So, uh, yeah. Don't put it in the red. Yeah. I'm trying. 
but if I, uh, it hurts. It hurts you? Really? It do be crunchy. Oh, th then you should tell me so, because I don't know that I don't get, like, immediate feedback from the sound. Um, right now it's only loud if I... No, now it's only in the red if I really go overboard. So, I'll try and, uh... Just talk like this, if that's okay for you guys. Okay, okay. Well... Yeah, I don't listen to these things. <laughs> Never. Um... Christoph ASMR. Yeah, I don't know if uh, if it'll ever be an ASMR thing. So, um, also it's it's kind of weird because when I'm recording all these um, readings for YouTube, when I do speak into the microphone just normally like this, it it'll never goes it never goes up to the red. So it's something to do with I guess OBS or something. What does lock volume mean? No. I'm not gonna mess too much with it. Um, if I if I hold it here, it'll never go into the red, even if I talk really loud. So uh, let's let's keep it like that, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> um, you guys, um, today we're going to be talking about Dagon and the Deep Ones. Um, it's from H.P. Lovecraft, uh, mostly inspired by H.P. Lovecraft, like I told in a stream long long ago hp uh, lovecraft has inspired a lot of other writers to actually work with his content so there are other stories involving dagon and deep ones that are not written by hp lovecraft but the original birth of the creature of the story are wholly dedicated to lovecraft everyone is saying hi to invisible and invisible is saying hi to everyone so Everyone's happy to see each other here. It's great. Um, so yeah. If you guys hasn't, haven't heard the story or seen or read the story or whatever, uh, because Dagon is one of the more popular stories by H.P. Lovecraft, just because it's uh, rather short, it's really to the point. Um, so it has been turned into a movie, it has been turned into audiobooks, it, it's a book of course. Uh, it has been used in video games as well. Uh, but if you do not know the original story, um, I have already done a full reading on it. So um, if you haven't heard it uh, yet, you can go down on the link that I've just put in the chat. Uh, then you'll normally be guided to my uh, reading of Dagon. It's one of my earlier uh, readings, so it might be uh, shite quality. Also, I don't listen to those things after I've posted them. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's a very short story actually. It's only like 13 minutes long, I think. Um, so, yeah, reading silently, you'll get through it in, in 10 minutes max. Um, but it really paints a picture of who or what Dagon is. And uh, we'll get into that um, in a bit. But first, I will uh, show you guys the miniatures. So, this is Dagon, as inspired by um, Common games, or C-M-O-N, uh, cool miniature or not games, uh, from their Death May Die Cthulhu uh, board game. So... Here it's more of like a snake-like creature. It's the first time I've ever like seen Dagon being portrayed like this. Normally he looks more like uh, the deep ones. So this is a deep one. So this is like a, a, a shark person or a fish person. Uh, normally Dagon is just like an ex exaggeration of this. It's, it's just a very big um, version of that. So... Thanks. I'm drinking water tonight. Because I donated blood and I have to rehydrate. <laughs> um, 
yeah, it was only last minute that I uh, remembered to turn those things back up, uh, uh, back on after uh, last week where I turned them off to prevent them from, you know, contaminating the footage. Um, if you want some salty crackers, no, 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 I, I ate, so uh, I ate in the meantime, so food, that's, that's all perfectly fine. Uh, did you get a cookie at least? Yes, I did get a cookie after the blood drive. Um, it was this morning, like at 11.30 or something, so uh, I went there, I ate like a cookie right before, because my breakfast was already a couple of hours past. Um, and uh, then I just went to the blood drive, drank some water there, while I was hanging on the machine, tapping blood. And afterward I got like a can of coke and uh, a bit of Biscoff, a speculoos. Um, <laughs> And then I just went into, you know, my my afternoon break and I just ate a normal meal, so <laughs> I was perfectly fine by then. Hey, turnip thrower, welcome in. How are you doing? Did How did the exams go? Because uh, today was your final day of exams, I think. So yeah, I, I got a cookie and then uh, I, I just uh, kept everything. I also got like more things, like I got like this uh, um, coupon for something that I can, you know, I can save it up if I donate more blood and then I can hand it in. And uh, I got like a scented candle. A Red Cross scented candle. Ew. Went kind of okay, but also slecht rushig, like a 0 out of 10. Well, good thing your exams are uh, rated on 20, so uh, it's not 0 out of 10, it's a 0 out of 20, which is worse. Uh, went kind of okay. Okay, let's let's just keep it on, it kind of went okay. Because that's what I want to hear, and that's what we're gonna stick with. <laughs> anyway, so, Dagon, deep ones. You can uh, also uh, have like, uh, you see like the difference in size because Dagon is a really big one. Uh, some people would describe him as a great old one. He is not, in fact, a great old one. Um, he's something else. People don't quite know where the origin of Dagon lies. Um, and you can say, well, isn't that normal for Lovecraft that you don't know where something comes from? He's an okay old one. He's not great. He's okay. He's a, a good old one. Um, hey, you don't know where they're coming from. They're coming from the stars. There are like these eons old creatures that are beyond our comprehension. So why shouldn't Dagon be something that we don't comprehend? Well, because there's reason to believe that he is actually from Earth. He was here and he got turned into whatever this is. By reasons. Um, so yeah, let's start painting. So uh, yeah, you know the drill. I'll just switch around, and it'll take a while, and then I'll forget to turn this microphone back and stuff like that. Turn my old back and be like a grumpy old granddad. I'll put the chat here on my other screen. Yes, <clears throat> okay, so uh, we have our Dagon here. Uh, I don't know, I was thinking, because if you have like the artwork for this guy, uh, he has like the same, and I'll, 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 I'll quickly grab him, just give me a second. According to the artwork uh, from the board game, he has like the same kind of color scheme um, that Cthulhu has. And I don't feel like painting two of these figures in the same color scheme, like that sickly green with the purple uh, tentacles. Um, he has brain matter beige. <laughs> Just gonna... Put, put the old favorite here, here, like ever presence. So, brain matter beige is with us all, always. Um, but yeah, 
Cthulhu has uh, brain matter beige on him, like like the the final highlight is brain matter beige. Um, but yeah, I, I don't want to do that color scheme again. But I was thinking like, okay, if you live in the deep oceans, uh, you kind of have like a bluish tint to yourself, I, I assume. Do you know whether the Jujutsu Kaisen character called Dagon is related? I, I hope the fuck not. That Cthulhu is chunky AF. Yeah, yeah, he, he's a chunky boy. He, he can give Godzilla a run for his money. Like uh, the legend, legendary pictures uh, Godzilla. Like that's a chunky boy. All hail the brain matter page. <laughs> okay, I, I like that. I, I I have like a meme for my channel, the brain matter beige. Like uh, love that. Uh, might make a an emoji out of brain matter beige or something. I don't even know. No, but I was thinking maybe uh, go with a dark blue uh, for his base scales and then just. Uh, give it like uh, greenish um, highlights so it has like this this what's that called in um, in English apple blouse I don't know um, it's probably not literally translated <laughs> no no not the scales Turquoise? Nah, it's not <laughs> apple blue sea green. <laughs> yeah, uh, turquoise. I don't know if because turquoise is uh, turquoise, we have the same thing. But his scales, I'm gonna like. I'm gonna start with dark blue, and uh, work it towards green. Aquamarine? No, 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 no. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like Google that shit. Google that shit. Well, apparently it's apple blue sea green. Because I think that apple blau zeehoon is not even a real color. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, guys. Like, just, just get on with it. So I'm uh, probably gonna start off with a, a very dark bluish color um, first. Have you ever seen a blue apple in the wild? No. Have you ever seen a blue waffle in the wild? Sorry. Aquamarine? Yeah, that could very well be the case. Like, aquamarine, I can actually see that working if I... Like, try to remember the color. So yeah, Invisible, you win a prize! The prize is, you get to keep watching me paint. That's a prize. If you add blueberries to your waffle dough, it is indeed a blue waffle. Oh, you sweet summer child. A blue apple has teeth? Oh, damn. You learn something new every day. God damn. How do I make this work? Ah, this. No, but uh, honestly, I. Not because I want to check who has uh, listened to my YouTube videos, but who of you have already read? like um, Dagon or has listened to it or has experience with Dagon, the Lovecraftian creature, not the apparently Jujutsu Kaisen character that's also called Dagon. Dark Jay-Z, you did. Did you actually listen to my uh, story or did you read it? Because I think I uploaded it after you've already read it. Like the tube. Yep. 
Yes, indeed, Turnip Trower. That's the one with the raised sea bottom. Well remembered, yeah. I'm impressed. So yeah, there is uh, two parts to this whole Dagon and Deep Ones mythology. Um, first of all, they don't feature in the same story. The first one, Dagon, is the eponymous character in the story Dagon. <laughs> Went better than my exam. <laughs> oh boy. It's weird how you can just, you know, remember that. Like, it's a random story, a horror story by some dude about a fish god. You, you'd remember that, and then... How did your exams go? Not well. I saw this awesome movie about the Deep Ones. Oh, what is it? If you uh, have the name of the movie um, invisible, that would be great. Looking for it? Yeah, just let us know when you find it. No pressure. So, you have the story Dagon, which features allegedly Dagon. And uh, then you have the Shadow over Innsmouth, that prominently features the Deep Ones. Uh, I haven't done Shadow over Innsmouth yet, because that's a rather long story. Has a lot of players in it, so uh, I'm just gonna wait a bit till I get that done. I just did the Dunwich Horror, and that's a really long one, and I'm gonna kind of, you know, go for a, a an easier one or a, a shorter one next time, just to balance it out. I'm gonna lurk while working on the last Beast Inside. Let's go. Little Mermaid is a great movie about the deep ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not not so much, but uh, okay. Could be, could be like uh, there's gotta be like a, a, a nugget of truth to it, I assume. Like all marine creatures are the same. Now, for those who don't know what Dagon the story is about, I will give a short recap. And I know, I know, um, like the audio the reading that I did on YouTube is only like 13 minutes long, so it, you might actually learn quicker by just going there, listening to it, and then coming back to the stream, and then you might catch me still explaining the same thing. Um, but it's about a... <laughs> Surprise! The movie is called Dagon. Well, okay. Well, uh, <laughs> guess we should have seen that one coming. And then uh, La Secta del Mar. Is that just the sea cult, or in in English? Uh, like my Spanish is shit, so. Sect of the Sea. Well, close enough. The Sea Cult, Sect of the Sea. Yeah, okay. And it's it's genuinely good. Like I I know a lot of horror movies are uh, kind of schlocky and are like this is so bad, it's good kind of quality. Um, but sometimes you actually get like really good movies in that.
I mean, I enjoyed it. Good fix in the story is what you already know. Oh, okay. Is it a long movie? Did they, like, take the original story and then just... elongate it? Like, expand on it? Or uh, did they actually do something new with it? Maybe a good one for movie night. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Like, I wouldn't mind watching a movie uh, about Dagon. You'd say it's worked uh, a while. Okay, um, well, I'll be honest, uh, Invisible, I'll have to look for a version that has, like, English subtitles. Because otherwise, I don't think I'll enjoy it that much. Um, not that I've, again, not that I have anything against Spanish, but I just don't speak the language. But I'm, I'm sure, like... I don't know if it's if it's like a, a indie film or it had a budget or something like that. But I can do corporate Spanish. Because <laughs> if it's like an independent thing, it's a... Uh, flujo de trabajo, okay? I will not even try to speak Spanish. Just, just, just... I, I won't. Now, um, I'm also going to do these uh, deep ones, but I am going to do them with a uh, contrast paint. Because they're small, we'll just quickly go over them. You guys can uh, already think about, um, there's like two elements to this, or two big elements to this model. You have his back, which, like I said, I'm going to do in a dark blue, going to start with that. And then uh, continue on with um, like a greenish influence. Um, but then you also have like his snail-like underbelly, which is like softer, I would say pink, but well, pink, reddish pink, like those Cthulhu um, tentacles. But if you're like, no, um, I'd, I'd prefer another color, just let me know. Um, the more options I have, We'll, we'll get a voting going, and then uh, we'll see what's up with that. Yeah, but I don't wanna want him to look like a tropical sea, sea snail. I want him to look like a monster. Hey, Heli, welcome back. Maybe Dagon wants to look like a tropical sea snail. I don't, I don't know. Um, I have uh, not asked Dagon his opinion on the matter. Um, could very well be the case. Quickly gonna use some brain matter beige to uh, lighten these guys up, otherwise I won't see a lot of the contrast paint. You can really see the model come alive. Just look how fast this, this actually goes really fast, holy shit. You even see a lot of detail. Why am I painting like, like, like losers? I, well, I could do this, Jesus. Now this, like I said, this is just a... Uh,
that's accurate. Yeah, but ChatGPT is kind of like an enabler because it doesn't know a bad idea from a good one unless it's specifically programmed in it. Yes, custard sire, tell me. I gave people too much power. Okay. In what sense? Custard sire just redeemed. I want it that way. Tropical sea snail. Snail dragon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, it is decided that the underbelly will indeed be yellow-ish. I'll try and make it work. Let's uh, make this dagon the. Uh, the Spanish have to be written in cap. No, come from after leave, but custard sire can't speak another language without yelling it. Like, when she tries to speak German or uh, Spanish or something like that, she always starts yelling it. Because she hides the insecurity of pronouncing it wrong. Which, you know, it's a genuine thing. Uh, let's go with... Uh, what do I have? I think I'll start with like an orange then. So that movie is on Netflix and Amazon Prime, but not in my region. But Invisible, aren't you in like the Spanish speaking region? No, I like the way you have to enunciate things in German. Okay. Like, it, it would be. Yelling is the only way to proper German. Okay, I have a feeling we're getting into like uh, stereotypes here. Uh, I don't want to, you know. FBI, open up! I was just saying, that sounds like Sazen coming in. <laughs> hey, Sazen, welcome in. No, but uh, talking about Germans. Hello, Sazen. He's not German. Uh, talking about Germans, uh, it's the Germans' fault that uh, the story of Dagon actually happens. Because it happens during World War One. Doesn't matter which World War I actually put it in, because, you know, they're both the uh, faults of the Germans. Well, no, but you, you know what I mean. So, um, this is gonna look horrible. I'm in South America, I think it's available on Europe, where Spain is. Yes. Um. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking, like, don't a lot of South American countries speak Spanish? Is, is that, is that wrong? Isn't that the case? I don't know. I don't know. Portuguese. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I heard Spain. What was the question? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Heli, uh, the question about Spain was, which parts of South America was were conquered by s the Spanish? <laughs> so where do they speak Spanish because it was enforced on them? Uh, 
You're right, we're just in different region for content because we're poor. Ah. That sucks. That really sucks. Now I slide into VPN promo, I wish I could get, like, promoted by uh, NordVPN or, like, Surfshark or something. I'm sure there's a lot of money in those uh, adverts. No, the, the ones I got is Raid Shadow Legends and Star Trek Fleet Command. Like that. This yellow is looking nasty as shit. <laughs> it's just, it's just saying. Like, I can see it work, I can see it work, like, trust the process, there is still a long way to go before it's, uh, it's, it's kind of finished. But, uh, it, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll need some work to get it where uh, I want it. Also really glad that those, uh, sound bits worked. Just no mis mistakes. They're just happy little accidents. I'll be your Bob Ross children. Also, I don't know your ages, so I'm, I will refrain from calling you children. Look, I gotta get in this hole to paint in yellow. I see a black hole, and I want it painted yellow. Quick, how old am I? You, you're like 13 and a half or something. They still call me Junior at work, don't mind, okay. Don't worry about it, Daddy. <laughs> okay. You can call me Daddy. <laughs> it is... I so regret ever making that. Hey! Oh yeah, I uh, I forgot. Thank you for subscribing, Dark Chasey, back there. Uh, I, I saw it, I don't know if I mentioned it, but thank you so much. And... Uh, Thank you, Heli, for uh, gifting subs to the community. Uh, love you. For control map delete and turn the thrower. Thanks. You are wonderful. Let me return the favor. Guys, if you ever think about uh, putting a tattoo on your skin, think about Heli uh, in the chat because uh, she is a very talented tattoo artist. Um, she's young, she's getting into it, but she also already shows a lot of promise and motivation to the art of tattooing. So, definitely a very good experience for your first tattoo if you have an idea for it. Uh, now is our dating sim game stream. Yes, indeed. I I, I, I still need to do that dating game. Like, <laughs> I kind of forgot about that. Uh, I should actually, yeah. I should really get into that dating game. Yeah, this looks way better already. And I'll, uh, I'll just ignore it for the rest of this uh, stream, uh, that dating game.
Yeah, Invisible, uh, I don't know if you were here already, but I, at a certain point I said um, that when I hit 50 followers, I will do a um, dating sim game stream based in the um, uh, Sengoku era of Japan. Like you have this uh, dating game where you can date Oda Nobunaga and stuff like that. Yeah, but you had forgotten. Okay, great. So, um... Yeah, some people uh, apparently uh, don't forget stuff like that, and uh, they keep pestering me about it. No, oh, Ellie, I'm I'm really happy with the tattoo I got, so uh, I'm I'm gonna promote the shit out of it. Which puts the love in love? Oh yeah, there's like this uh, this Lovecraft dating game. Yeah. <laughs> My Halo name was Raging Elephant for a reason. I don't forget. No, it because you had like a, a, a very big temper when you were playing. So <laughs> that's, that's a different reason, man. <laughs> Also, while uh, these are a bit drying, uh, I'm gonna guys show you like where I. For my uh, Dead Space uh, diorama, so this is Isaac already. How far I've uh, gotten him. So he's now painted red, and red is gonna be the base a color for um, non metallic metal copper. So, um, yeah. You're looking good, sehr gut. Yes, gut. So yeah, um, really looking forward to uh, to continuing that one because uh, yeah, I, ju I just like it. Hey, where's the all singing reward we're all saving brushes up for? <laughs> Should be there. Like the thing is, you guys don't even let me get to the story, so I, I keep reacting to the uh, to the chat. Um, <laughs> keep reacting to the chat. I don't even get to my story, so uh, I can't be singing a story <laughs> if I uh, if I don't have a story to tell. Paint my slug. I am busy. I am. I am shaking my paint for the slug. Um, biggest is 2K IRL word ban. Huh. Hey, yeah. I think there's another one. Oh, thanks, Contra Math Elite. Um, this is also a reminder for myself. Um, I think there's another one missing as well, so I might have, like, skipped a couple checks uh, to put back on wine. I'll, I'll check after the stream, so... Uh... God damn it. I just launched the figure into the fucking ozone layer. This one's called Deep Blue. Which is uh, very appropriate. So I'll uh, go back to painting uh, the snail. Also, it's not your snail, like you. Choose like one color. That's it. That's all the redemption gives you. So I just hope that not a lot of people start like redeeming it and this becomes like some sort of Frankenstein. It's a slug, not a snail. Snail is, has a shell. Slug is slimy. It's it's not. It's not either of those things. It's Dagon. <laughs>
I don't, I don't have time to look at the Discord. <laughs> Should I? Well, there's plenty of, of parts on this creature that you can still, like, ask for a certain color. They're gonna see him rolling. <laughs> the slug is moist. Gonna get fries. Right, turnip drawer, go have fun. Have a good meal. Okay, but um, for reals now, the story of Dagon uh, starts uh, in the middle of World War One, when um, a soldier is being attacked, or the, a ship is being attacked by a, a German sea raider. And uh, the protagonist of the story is captured together with uh, the remaining survivors of his boat or his ship and uh, they are being brought aboard the German Sea Raider as prisoners of war. Now he doesn't uh, want to let it slide and he uh, escapes. He sees his chance to escape because the Germans were so polite to him and uh, they, um, they let him loose too much and he took his chance at a certain point put provisions in a boat and just escaped like a little rowboat um quack, quack. were you quacking for a certain reason or was it uh, again a case of the ooh, a button i must press no okay just a quack yes you are just a quack that is correct so um he kind of miscalculates where he is uh and uh how horrible it is to be stuck at sea because bought quack okay And he uh, is kind of stuck at sea for a very long time, just in his rowboat, um, drifting across the waves. And uh, he thinks that, uh, well, yeah, uh, I'm about to die, but at least I'll die free. Um, when, at a certain point, he drifts off, falls asleep, and awakens to see that he is actually lying on solid ground. <laughs> Why don't you, brother? Why have you forsaken me? Be strong, Clar Clarence. Be strong for mother. Why don't you love me, brother? <laughs> All that meme. With the painted space marines. Um... He awakens and he finds that he is on solid ground. Well, solid is saying much because as he looks around, he notices that he's lying on what seems to be like a, a vast, dark expanse of land. With like no vegetation on it. It's just black muck, mud, dirt. It stinks, there's like dead fish everywhere, and like rocks, <laughs> rocks, um, dead sea creatures, skeletons, there's, there's, it's, it's weird, and it's so moist. He, he gets sucked in, like, the moment he sets a foot 
on it. So uh, he, he stays in the shade of his um, of his boat for a while. That he uses as like a, a makeshift camp. But then he realizes that yeah, nothing's nothing's ever gonna fucking happen here. So uh, because the sun has been out for a couple days, the surface starts to dry up, and he's able to walk on it. And he has gathered that the surface he's standing on is actually the sea bottom. Now, of course, it's not at the sea bottom anymore. It has been thrown up by some tectonic upheaval. There's been an earthquake and a part of the sea bottom has just been launched up and come to the surface of the ocean. And he's like, oh, that's that's why there's all like these creatures here. Um, that's why it's so wet. Uh, I'll try and, uh, and get my bearings and move out. By the way, doing a Bulger's Gate tree run with the no party limit mod. And man, oh man, it's a blast. Having the whole team ready to fight, doing it on honor mode, though. Just for shits and giggles. Damn. Um, also, if you have the uh, no party limit and they're all in a conversation, will they always react to a conversation? Will everyone who has to say something, say something? Yes, all of them. Oh, damn. So much chaos. But the moment you install mods, you don't have like achievements anymore. Or you do. Yeah, that's that's the, the thing that I, I dislike about Baldur's Gate 3. Well, dislike is saying much that I, I, I think is kind of a shame. Is that um, after a while you have like your favorite party members. And... Um, after a while, you just put those in your party all the time, and when you come across something that another party member will react to it, or would have reacted to it, uh, you, you miss out on that, and it's like, yeah, that's a kind of shame. Someone said mods, I am here. <laughs> Jesus. No, it's a Baldur's Gate 3 mod. Uh, it's not, not, not a mod like that. I accidentally let Gale go. Oh my god. <laughs> like, you let him go in the sense that he <laughs> you didn't believe it when he said he was going to blow himself up for <laughs> Spoilers, by the way. I need a PC that can run that game. Ah. Also, isn't it quite hard to actually let Gale go? Like, I thought he was one of those party members that... Like, kind of always stuck with you. Kind of intrigued by how you let Gale go. Get rid of the nice guy. Get rid of the person everybody tries to get rid of but just can't.
Just didn't want him in my party, so I said we should uh, part ways, and there he went, never to return. That's weird. <laughs> Apparently parting ways <laughs> is permanent. Weird. Normally, I don't know if you if you have that option. To actually just send... Send Gale away. Like maybe very early in the game? But after a while he should just stick around because, yeah, like we say, he's one of the hardest characters to actually like piss off and, and, and scare away at a certain point. To a, to a point where you're like, Gail, are you okay, man? Because you seem to be at peace with an abnormal amount of shit that I put you through. Look, the only thing that I found that pisses Gale off is licking that aphrodisiac spider in uh, the second chapter. That's something he can't... he can't stand. If you start licking that dead thing, he's, he's like, Why the fuck are you licking a dead spider? Stop licking the dead fucking spider! But otherwise, that, nah, never, never seen him mad or, or lose affinity points. See you guys later. Enjoy the slug snail stream. Thanks. Thank you for dropping by. See you next time. Or later. I, I assume you go uh, walk the dog or something. Or go play a game. You'll be back. They're always come a come ba gonna come back. I'm checking my Blodger's Gate tree. Okay. I think I'm gonna use some orange for like um, the the flaps right beside the. Uh, I want the yellow to actually be the the inside of of its its gut and stuff like that, and I'm gonna do the orange for the outer sides, just making a very beautiful slug out of it. No, but uh, to continue the story, so the uh, World War One soldier stuck in the mud just starts to travel um, to get to like the only thing that he sees that's different in this entire dark mass, and that is a um, a rise on the horizon where the land mass is even higher, and he's like, yeah, well, um, better get over there. That's the only visual different place I could go, so um, let's check that out. So he he travels there, not quite knowing what he's going to encounter. Um, he takes a couple days, he, he finds all manner of, like, like I said, dead sea life and stuff. And at a certain point, he finds like a large incline where he crawls upon. And at the top of it, 
he sees a valley below with a river, an abyss, and a large stone monolith. Uh, can't you ask Withers to uh, get you Gale back? Like maybe he's dead. He's not dead. Yeah. Okay. He's not dead yet. goes to um, investigate that um, that monolith he notices there's a, a lot of inscriptions on there and these inscriptions show all manner of marine life that he recognizes but also a lot of marine life that he doesn't and he thinks it's quite weird it's, it's monstrous and he even sees a couple of pictures of like primitive man in there and um, it's like, oh, that means there is something weird going on. Um, especially about that one creature that is um, drawn in the same, you know, the same size as a whale next to it. That's probably gonna be like, uh, you know, artistic freedom. Uh, it's probably not gonna be like the same size of a whale, am I right? And uh, at that moment, something jumps out of that abyss wraps like its hands slash tentacles around that monolith and um, tries to protect it from that person. That person is just going insane at that creature just jumping out of the abyss and uh, he flees and he flees all the way back until he can't flee no more from exhaustion. He uh, falls unconscious and he wakes up on a ship that has picked him up with his uh, little lifeboat. And uh, he, he tells them, yeah, there's like this huge landmass and there's like, uh, it's, it's from the bottom of the sea and it has come up. And there's like this huge rock on it and uh, the creatures, and, and they look at him and they're like, bro, there's nothing like that there. So <laughs> you're probably delusional from dehydration. And he's like, yeah, no, I'm not. And... Uh, Presumably years later, or months or weeks later, you don't know, there's like an undeterminate amount of time later, he's writing this all down in like a, um, a journal, when uh, he hears something like crawling through the, the hallways outside. And he's certain that something is trying to come in and it's, it's this monster. That has followed him because he knows too much he knows what's hiding underneath the waves and it wants him dead and then uh, he sees only one course of action and that is to jump out of the window onto the streets below and kill himself so yeah he went utterly mad and it's left in the middle if he either actually saw what he saw, or indeed he was just like delusional, dehydrated uh, on his boat, um, just, you know, surviving by the skin of his teeth and, and then being picked up at a certain point and, and the, the people being like, yeah, no, dude, uh, there was there was nothing, nothing there. So uh, you're uh, you're a bit off there. Uh, 
I like to think that it could be both actually. Like the story where he um, he thinks he saw all that just because he's heavily traumatized by first of all the war that did a number of a lot of people, um, and then the fact that yes he was in he was dehydrated he was starved he might have like hallucinated at some point dreamt it all up because he gives like during the story he gives like a couple of really weird um descriptions of the sky and stuff like that and you're like okay that doesn't sound like like reality and it might just be all in his head and that there's nothing wrong and the, the creature that he thinks is trying to bash down his door is not even there and he just killed himself and people will always remember him as this crazy dude that that just suddenly killed himself without good reason like if you think about it like that it's really sad It's coming along nicely. Thanks. We're still far off though, so uh, I'm just painting a bit. I feel this color is way too, too light already, so... Uh... I know, what, you, what do you guys think? You think it's uh, too much, or...? I feel there needs to be like another step in between. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. What you're doing with it uh deep sea critters have these neon patterns sometimes okay yeah let's uh, let's go with that Happy accidents. Yeah, it's it's a everything's a happy accident here. Yeah, it still kind of blends when it dries, so it's gonna turn out okay. The thing is, this is not the lightest that it's gonna be. Like, there's gonna be like another layer like a point highlight which uh, will probably like darken this in comparison as well am 
I a happy accident? Yes, you are a happy accident. I accidentally met you and I'm happy that I did. So you are a happy accident. Can we get a close-up? Uh, sure. You like that detail lighter part? Well, apparently, uh... Control math and custard tire like it as well, so uh, let's continue on with that. How will you do the tail bit? I have no clue. I think that it's gonna be yellow and orange as well, just like the lower side. Because here it kind of runs out of the tail into that mouthpiece, I assume. Definitely the, um, the inner part is gonna be yellow, because that's gonna be the same as the uh, exotic snail part here. I don't know what I'm gonna do that hand thing in, so... If you have ideas, let me know. There is um, points to redeem, so uh, if you want it a certain way, let me know. Or if you just have a good idea, just let me know. <laughs> just like the picture in the Discord, again, I have not the time nor the possibility to look at the Discord at the moment, so... I'm gonna do it later. I won't fall for that. Will you do it for a Scooby snack? Man, I wonder what, uh, just keep hoarding those brushes. <laughs> I want to be stealthy about this. Stealthy about what? Apparently I can't select I want it that way. Can't? God damn it. I'll take a look uh, after the stream, uh, Jay-Z. What would have been your proposition? Let me hear it. Also, trailer and movie in English on YouTube. Okay, nice. God damn it. Oh, yeah. That's a real cool looking, uh, Cool looking slug in the Discord. Then 
I'd have to go with white. Shit. Link in Discord. Just I don't hold it accountable if it's not your taste. I'm an adult. I make my own faults and mistakes. Also, it's, there's no mistakes. There's only happy little accidents. That's the uh, that's the theme of tonight's episode. Episode, got a series. Uh, Jay Z, we we've talked about that. There, apparently, there is another one missing uh, as well, and uh, I probably didn't reactivate it. Um, when I just quickly went over all like the switches to to put them back on, so I'll check it out later, and uh, it'll be back up tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow and uh, brain matter beige, yes. Yeah, this is just a very slow and meticulous work on a, a model this big, so uh, I'm sorry if it's a bit slower and more boring now. Try to get like all these little pimples on him. That's a bit sluggish. Sometimes lurking Quack. because of the beast inside. Quack. Did you just call me a quack? Are you quacking to me? Yeah, I like this effect. Uh, now that I've done like more of him, I really like it. And yeah, the uh, the yellow is is working out with it. So um, I'm I'm gonna clean up the yellow, of course. But uh, as like a first idea, yeah, yeah, this is this is gonna this is gonna work out. This is gonna look great. Also kind of like uh, the synthwave uh, sound that's on. It's supposed to be a horror soundtrack. No horror, just synthwave. Also, say what you want. Uh, from uh, CMON, like uh, come on, cool miniature or not. I don't know how you just say their name in casual conversation. Like, their Kickstarters are always like fantastic and big and then they don't kind of deliver on time on most of their projects, but the models are always like made with love and they look sublime. The internet never lies. Oh man, I wish I could believe that. But if Dr. House has ever taught me anything, it's that everybody lies.
turning the slug upside down. This is really Zen people I'm telling you guys. Doing artsy stuff as well. What are you doing, uh, Control Map Delete? What are you up to? Are you making uh, magic cards? I'm making Dwight Shrew tokens. <laughs> <laughs> For your Magic the Gathering pre-release. <laughs> okay. What are the tokens used for? And why Dwight Fruit? I used the bit where he wears the face like in Silence of the Lambs. Okay. That was good. Yes, that's that's good. Well, that's one side done. Now the other one. <laughs> yeah, but that that looks pretty okay. I like the uh, carapace feeling that it has.
if you don't have a Valentine's gift yet, you should at least give this mini. <laughs> I already have a violent Valentine's gift, but yeah, apparently she's really in love with this uh, slug. You know, like I was saying earlier, like before, uh, you know, we just talked about anything else. Um, like Dagon is considered to be one of the big bads in uh, Lovecraft stories. But like I said, he's not like considered to be a great old one. He's like something less than that. And... Um, it's because the Deep Ones and what Dagon is might just be like something that has been a, a um, spin-off or a fallout reaction of the coming of Cthulhu to um, the world or the coming of the Elder Things to the world. Now the Elder Things are described in um, At the Mountains of Madness. The Mountains of Madness is also a very good and a very long story, which I will we'll eventually get to it. Um, and um, the Elder Things came to Earth and started like a servant race called the Shogoth. And the Shogoth um, are basically creatures that are genetically versatile or genetically unstable so you can actually like make them develop traits to suit their environment and uh, it was said that um, at a certain point a lot of the Shogoth uh, kind of had like an uprising uh, to the Elder Things under the influence of uh, Cthulhu, because Cthulhu and the Great Old Ones are enemies of the Elder Things. Which, you know, kind of confusing since one is the Great Old Ones, the other are the Elder Things. They're all old and they're still fighting one another, basically like politics in America. Um, and the Shogoth kind of, you know, did an uprising and they fled and it is believed or it is a fan theory that some of the shogoth actually uh, went down into the oceans towards where uh, Cthulhu lay in you know really yeah, dreaming and they turned into the first deep ones and uh, one of those larger shogoth became Dagon uh, others say that uh, some of the Shogoth actually turned into like ape-like beings uh, that became eventually the humans. And that's the reason why uh, in Shadow Over Innsmouth it is said that uh, if you are a descendant of the Deep Ones, you can actually be like human for a the first part of your life and then after a while your transformation into a deep one triggers and you become a deep one because that's like your nascent shock of genes that that just kick in so i think that's pretty cool others say that um because dagon is based off the sumerian god of the seas dagon um Geriatric Wars from Hell. Yeah, basically. Like if all the old people in Hell were like, uh, hey, let's fuck up uh, life for the living. And you're like, why though? Hey, Turnip Trevor, welcome back. How were your fries? Were they good? Well, it's fries, they're always good. Look what we did with it. We're 
turning it into a shiny, slug-like creature. <laughs> We're gonna eat them now! Oh, okay! <laughs> there were a lot of people in there. Okay, uh... Bon Appetit? Yeah, but um, Unloaded think, uh, thinks he's cute. Okay, yeah, um, thanks. Apparently he's a hit with the ladies, so uh, <laughs> I'll just take it as, as it comes. Apparently they like slug-like things. Mm -hmm. No, but like I said, uh, Dagon uh, was like a Sumerian god of the seas, or an Assyrian god of the seas. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and uh, he might have been, like, based on that, because the old gods, again, old, uh, at a certain point, they, um, they were changed by something else. That's also a story, but it's from the Lovecraft's dream cycle, where uh, people are actually wondering where the, the gods have gone, like our own pantheon, like uh, think of the Greek pantheon and, and like uh, indeed the Sumerian pantheon, Egyptian pantheon and stuff like that. Like at a certain point, the gods don't respond anymore. And that is because they are beholden to the the old gods and it could just be that at a certain point our gods our human gods have been taken over by other forces and turned into these malign creatures and that is the reason why you know they are corrupted Dagon Kuhn why you no respond Kokoro Brokoro from Dagon Kuhn. You fucking weeps. <laughs> so yeah, um, Turnip Trower to come back uh, to your uh, to your question, like uh, from the Jujutsu Kaisen um, character. I don't know. It could be a reference to uh, Lovecraft's Dagon, but it could just as well be like a reference to um, the original Dagon, who was an actual mythological figure and god in like Sumeria. So, Especially because, like, it's Japan, they often, like, love to take other mythologies and then just incorporate them or throw in references to that. So it could, could as well just be that, that they're like, oh, that's a cool name from a, a mystical character or from an old religion, let's just take that and run with it. I don't know uh, what what Dagon is or does in uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Kaisen, jeez, I can't pronounce that for shit. But uh, if he has like water powers, I don't know. Anyway, Dagon is also referred to as Father Dagon, and he is considered to be immortal, because all Deep Ones are immortal. So the moment you uh, turn into a Deep One, as a human, you basically live forever after if your uh, transformation is complete. Um, and uh, Father Dagon is uh, the concert to um, Mother Hydra. Hydra is the female counterpart of Dagon. And of course we know Hydra from 
Greek mythology, so you can think like, is that a term? Because if you know D&D, if you know like uh, Greek mytho uh, mythological stories, you know that there is a Hydra, but the Hydra is kind of weird. There should be more Hydras than just one, but apparently there is only, you know, more. He's a cute octopus fellow that makes whirlpools to absorb people into himself and then consumes the stored power to become a big scary octopus guy. Yeah, he's probably um, based off of Dagon, this one. Not the god, but actually this one, because that sounds horrible. The Hydra is from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Hail Hydra! Yes, um... Marvel uh, invented the Hydra. True. They also invented Nazis. If it weren't for Marvel, we wouldn't have had World War II. We wouldn't have had racism if it weren't for Marvel. Taken out of context, that doesn't make any sense. To be fair, even in context, that doesn't make any sense. Cut off one hat and another will rise. It's a cool idea for an organization though. But why did it have to be Nazis? <laughs> I just like there's, there was at a certain point, if, if you think about the comics, uh, comic book industry, you don't think that Marvel and DC would ever work together, right? Well, there was a point in the early 90s, I think, where they said, hey, you know what? Let's make like a crossover event between the two studios. Um... And there was like this this event where there was like a, a contest between the universes to see which was better. And in the end they decided, yes, the Amalgam Universe. And in the end it was decided that, uh, well, um, we shouldn't have like differences, we should become one. Okay, I'll hydrate. Thank you. And uh, the Amalgam line was created for a short while, and uh, popular characters like fused into one. So you had uh, Captain America and... Uh... Yes, you had Captain America and Superman that became one. You had Wolverine and Batman that became one. Um... It was kind of weird. And... Um... In the lead up to that point, you had different villains and heroes meeting up with one another and exchanging stuff. And uh, at a certain point, Red Skull met the Joker. And the Joker said, oh, this is awesome, this is all cool and well. And um, then the Red Skull was like, yeah, um, for the glory of the Third Reich and so. And, and the Joker suddenly is like, okay, dude. Um... I might be insane, and I might be a homicidal maniac, but I'm still an American and I'll never work together with Nazis. And I was so like... The Joker said that! Okay! <laughs> but the Joker is like... Look, dude, I kill people all the fucking time in, in the most gruesome ways, but at least I'm not a Nazi. <laughs> and... That's so so funny. The problem is, now that I think about it out loud, that's kind of like a way a lot of people think when they're they're talking about radicalization and and 
put, pushing their opinions on someone. Like, if you have, like, the radical left or the radical center, you don't have radical centers, but, like, uh, radical right, radical left, radicals, extremist, religion, whatever, they'll, they'll do stuff that is abhorrent on its own, but then they'll defend themselves by basically saying, but at least I'm not a Nazi. And that's like... Yes, but it's not just Nazis who can be bad guys, guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can be an asshole without being a Nazi. They don't own being assholes. Although they did a really good job of it. But that, that always struck to me like... <sighs> Look, I might be a homicidal maniac, <laughs> but I'm not a Nazi. Uh, yeah, S yeah, but it, it didn't come from a, a, a lawful, chaotic dichotomy. It came from literally like, yeah, but I'm still an American. And I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the Joker is anything but patriotic, so. Meanwhile, the neo-Nazis in the US. Why are you guys typing it like this? Is, can't you? Yeah. Is it because it's being uh, held up by the... Uh, it's a bad word for Twitch. Ah, uh, yeah, I assume it like that. Yeah, okay, no, no, no problem. Then I guess we uh, better stop talking about uh, those people, that group. But yeah, Hail Hydra, stuff like that. Also, patriotism is a great tool for homicidal maniacs. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good way to, uh, you know, hide behind the agenda, I guess. Okay, I think we're uh, done with that layer. Let me just quickly check. <laughs> Maybe we use the word cheese from now on. No, I don't, don't want cheese to become a thing. We have to talk about cheese and be sure nothing like cheesism is happening again. <laughs> we can't let the Dutch get away with all that cheese. Or the French. Oh no, we are here in Belgium are, are just completely surrounded by cheese. Mm. 
not see that coming, yes. I'm thinking for the final highlights, um, like a very light green, just a, a dab of it, or maybe brain matter beige. No, I am uh, going to go with um, a color that is, I think, appropriately named Kraken Skin. <laughs> it's appropriately named Green. <laughs> now, I'm not going to do Brain Matter Beige just yet. I'm going to go with Kraken Skin. Uh, crack and skin just to have like the edge highlight and give it like an extra shine on there. Need some skin care. I've got crack and skin. My skin is cracking. You get it. <laughs> Lamb. Word of advice, if you get the spaghetti in Prague, don't mistake the sauerkraut you get for cheese. Yuck! <laughs> uh, Hanlora says you shouldn't use that paint. All the poor krakens that died for it should live. Yeah, but it's already dead because it's already processed, so I might as well use it. Can do nothing else but just get cracking. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I think I uh, I, I have a, a bit too few blood in my uh, my uh, my system. It's vegan, yeah. It's vegan cracking skin. It's uh, it's full cracking. Grass fed Kraken. <laughs> it's free range Kraken. It's a uh, non fungible Kraken. <laughs> Something completely different. Quickly gonna go across this ridge here. That pour sounds like a pint, and I feel like drinking a pint. Thanks. <laughs> I choked on my water. <laughs> that pour makes me thirsty. You know, we should do away with the pour. They make me thirsty.
cutting these tiny cards with my tiny knife also makes me thirsty. You said knife. It means you're uh, Australian. That's not a knife. You did too. That doesn't sound like a lot, to be honest. But you're probably just, you know, taking it easy. Yeah, twisting and turning. It's a me, the perfectionist. Well, you only have to blame yourself for that. So feel bad about yourself. Think about how everything is your fault. P please don't do that. I'm, I'm, I'm joking, guys. <laughs> Even more, yes. You can blame your parents for expecting too much from you as well. That always seems to work. <laughs> yeah, that, that tends to work. Most of the time it's true. Like, your parents are, in a certain sense, responsible for a lot of things that you do when you are, you know, an adult, so... Like they gave you your like your base programming. Everything you add afterwards, yeah sure that's that's on you, but your base programming, that's your parents. Then you can be like Garros and just yell at them, you made me who I am and die. That'll teach him. I know, because Garish was wrong. <laughs> Thanks for the genes, Mom. Why did you procreate? Damn. Just don't go yelling that on your way to prison. <laughs> My mom and dad made me do it.
Ah, the white, naked crane that chose one of her human keepers as her life mate died, apparently. She became 42? Holy damn! That's old for a bird. Ah, the old bird died. It's almost funny if she's really a bird. But isn't that quite normal for birds to actually choose, like, humans as partners? Because they're, they just bond for life and they have, like, this one wild night and they, they make a mistake, but they, they stick with it. Because they're kind of ride or die. Her name was Walnut. Oh my god, that is pretty cool. Kind of weird for a crane, though. They choose birds, usually. A lot of birds don't really have partners for life. That's a myth. Oh, well, um, my bad. My, I really didn't know. I, I assumed that was actually true, yeah. Welcome to birth meetups. Yeah, true, true, true. So guys, what do you think of uh, the effect on the scales? On a scale of one to two. Oh my god. Now I have to refocus. Yeah, I like it as well. I'm uh, really happy with it so far. I uh, still have like the other side to do. Um, might do that in between streams. And then next stream we're gonna probably work on um, the yellow part more and more. Because I'm, I'm really glad we, we got to do like these, uh, these scales uh, today. So, uh, yeah, the bioluminescence uh, part. I'm just gonna put it like this so you can see it. And I'm gonna switch over to my other camera. Yeah, I, I really liked how it turned out. So uh, uh, it was a good idea. Uh, I also like, like at the moment, the color with the yellow part. Uh, wouldn't think it turned out this great, but um, with the green glowy part, I think the yellow will turn out great. Uh, also, yellow is a very Lovecraftian horror color. Uh, the king in yellow is, you know, a thing. The king in yellow isn't by Lovecraft, by the way. Hashtur is, but, you know, it's same but different, but still same. Anyway, guys, um, I'd like to thank you. Um, me and Brain Matter Beige here would like to thank you for coming out again tonight to uh, watch me paint. Uh, I really like this model. Uh, again, I always thought that uh, Dagon was just a big deep one. He had more like humanoid features, stuff like that. Um, more like this chunky boy. Um, but when I 
when I got like um, the Call of Cthulhu Death May Die board game and I saw that Dagon was like this snake slug thing, I was at first kind of like, uh, what? Uh, but now that I'm painting him, I'm, I'm really enjoying it and uh, I, I get like a love for this model and I really like how he's like Father Dagon, the, the father of all deep ones. Anyway, uh, next week I will be continuing with Dagon, like I said. So uh, I hope to see you all back then. And uh, hail our Lord Brain Matter Beige. Okay, uh, Chasey, do me a favor and and think about how I can automate something about Brain Matter Beige or put something in there. You you are more experienced with. Uh, streams and I am and apparently brain matter beige is a meme already. So uh, I, I'd like to uh, you know <laughs> Oh boy <laughs> uh, I'd like to uh, put that uh, put that down. So uh, if you have an idea <laughs> Got you boo <laughs> Okay No, but um, guys, thank you for all the uh, feedback on um, on the model, the ideas. I really love how it's turning out. Uh, so that is partly thanks to you. Uh, can't do all this without you guys. So I'm really thankful for that. I'm also thankful for you guys being here and being so active in chat. So uh, that warms my heart. Um, that'll be me for tonight. Hope you guys have a good end of the week tomorrow uh, you have a good weekend afterwards and then a good week after that and we'll see each other again on thursday uh thank you again for everyone who has uh gotten subscriptions today uh thank you chasey for uh subscribing thank you heli for donating uh subs to control math delete and turnip thrower that's really kind of you and um yeah have a good evening everyone i am christoph this is Miniature Mifos, and uh, live long and prosper, or something like that. <laughs> okay, see you guys later. Bye.